Many times with graphite drawings, we want to create smooth transitions of value or simply areas of smooth applications where you don't really see the pencil lines. Most of us simply adjust the amount of pressure we place on the pencil and then use a blending tool such as a blending stump to soften the applications. And while this technique works okay, it's often inconsistent and it's also time consuming. Well, there is a better way, a secret weapon, if you will, to get these same effects. And in this video, I'll share it with you. Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this video I'll share with you a form of graphite that you may not have heard of before that may dramatically change the way that you approach pencil drawing. Now this interesting form of graphite is called powdered graphite. As the name implies, it's simply pulverized graphite. And in the next few minutes I'll share with you several ways you can use it and also how to make your own. But before we get into that, I'd like to remind you that if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe so that you're notified when we post new videos like this one. And if you want to check out our membership program, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media, weekly live lessons, weekly critiques, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, there's a link in the description below. You can check that out. And if you want to just check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, I'll also leave a link in the description below for that as well. Now on to powdered graphite. Here's a look at manufactured powdered graphite. This particular graphite is manufactured by Generals. Powdered graphite may be difficult to find at a local art store, but we can make our own. Just use a sandpaper pad like we have here and rub some soft graphite over the surface. Here I'm rubbing a bit of 7B graphite. Then using a brush, we can lift up the powdered graphite that we've created and apply it to the surface. The brush I'm using here is simply a nylon brush. You'll notice that our initial applications are quite soft and light, but we can revisit the powdered graphite that we've created and put an additional layer, gradually darkening the value. If you choose to use the manufactured powdered graphite, it's best to put it in a smaller container. Here I'm using the lid from the container that contained the powdered graphite. Again, we can use the brush to apply it to the surface. As we rub the brush over the surface, less of the graphite remains in the brush, making a lighter mark. Here we can create a quick value scale. We can keep revisiting the powdered graphite and adding additional applications to make the value slightly darker. All of the remaining excess powder that remains on the surface can be blown away gently or brushed away with a drafting brush. Let's create three swatches of value. We'll start here with a lighter swatch of value. We're applying the powdered graphite with a brush here, but it also can be applied with a cotton swab or a tissue paper. Next, we'll create a slightly darker swatch of value. Again, we'll just continue layering the applications of the powdered graphite to make the value slightly darker. Now we'll make a third swatch, and again, we'll make this one slightly darker than the last. We're applying the powdered graphite to smooth bristle paper. This surface, of course, is incredibly smooth. The texture of the paper will affect the appearance of the powdered graphite. One way that you might choose to use powder graphite is somewhat like a painting technique, if you will. In this particular case, you can see I've sketched out the contour lines of the subject, this dog, and I'm working here on smooth bristle paper. In this particular drawing, I'm adding the powdered graphite much like I would in a painting. I'm just adding bits of value. And if I need a darker value, of course, I apply more layers of the powdered graphite to the surface. Now, of course, this is an incredibly smooth surface, so you can see some of the powdered graphite collecting in areas. Then over the top of my, we'll call it an underpainting with powdered graphite, I can apply pencil marks, 
with a traditional pencil. In this case, I'm applying the graphite using both a traditional wooden encased pencil and also a lead holder. And here's a look at the finished drawing. Now, another way you might choose to use powdered graphite is to create somewhat of a base value on the surface of a drawing. In this drawing, I'm working on Stonehenge paper, which has quite a bit more tooth associated with it. And I've marked off the picture plane using masking tape. I've again drawn the subject using just the contour lines, and I'm applying the powdered graphite this time with a mop brush. But this time I'm applying it over the entire surface. So I'm basically toning or tinning the paper. This is going to give me a nice starting value that's a little bit darker than white. It'll allow me to erase out some of the highlights and add some of the darker values. You'll also notice that I'm using a test strip of paper and knocking off some of the powder graphite before going to the final surface. In this particular case, I'm using a blending stump to work this powder graphite into the surface so that the value is a little bit darker and more consistent. Now, instead of just adding darker values, I can also remove some of the graphite to create lighter values or tints. This, of course, is going to lead to a broader range of value in the final drawing and additional contrast. Here you can see I'm using a vinyl eraser to erase out some of the light areas of this water stream. Now of course we can add more graphite to create darker values. Essentially we can push and pull the values, adding lighter values by erasing and adding darker values by adding additional graphite. Like I mentioned, this often leads to a greater range in value. Value is the darkness or lightness of a color, and it's the most important element of art. By starting with just a little bit of powdered graphite on the surface, we initially start with a gray instead of a white. This helps us create a full range of value in the drawing, which leads to a greater illusion of realism. And then of course, when we remove the tape, we get a better idea of just how dark we made that initial surface before we started erasing. And here's a look at this finished drawing. All right, let's look at one more example. In this case, I'm drawing a jellyfish. I start here with a light contour line drawing. And then again, once our contour line drawing is in place and our picture plane has been taped off, we can apply powdered graphite. This time I'm going to apply a heavy application to create a darker value to begin with. Using the mop brush, I can evenly spread it around on the surface. If I need to blend it additionally, I can always use a blending stop or a chamois. Now I'll reinforce my lines using a pencil and then it's time to start using the eraser and the pencil to create that full range of value. Here we're starting with a value that's closer to the middle of the value scale. This again will lead to a greater illusion of realism thanks to a broader range of value. You can see just how important the eraser is as a mark making tool when we use powdered graphite in this manner. I love using an electric eraser as well. And this surface, again, Stonehenge paper, is very tough and won't tear when we use an electric eraser. Here you can see we're adding our tentacles using a darker and softer graphite pencil. And we can refine the drawing, of course, by adding and subtracting. And then again, when the drawing is complete, we can carefully remove the tape away, revealing a nice sharp border. And here's a look at this finished drawing with powdered graphite. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Powdered graphite is a remarkable tool. It's a little bit messy, but it is a wonderful way to create a full range of value in your drawings and also create those smooth, even transitions of value. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.